Hey everyone. Today's tutorial will be about modeling the object you see here in this render. Um, this is a symmetrical model I created in 3ds Max using a few uh, simple polygon editing techniques and a few modifiers. Here's how we'll do it. We'll go into, uh, as, as with most of the uh, uh, mathematical models that we create. Uh, we're going to start out with the extended primitives and the uh, the hedra uh, primitive here in 3ds Max. Um, but just for the speed's sake, I'm going to do this uh, in you know arbitrarily. Although I do have the scene set up to uh, uh, to use centimeters as the uh, units. All right, so. Here is the uh, Hedra primitive. Uh, this is the Tetra family. All right, so we'll leave that as it is. Um, we're not going to change any of the family parameters. However, down at the axis scaling, uh, we have P, Q, and R, and we're going to change the, uh, the middle one here, Q, to 300. And then the final one, is the R and we'll change that also to 300 okay and that that will be the same regardless uh, of what units you're going to be modeling to all right so it's uh, the scaling will just be 100 300 and 300 all right and this is our starting object all right so uh, I'll just move it up on the plane a little bit here Okay, so this is how we'll begin. Uh, from here, uh, we'll just add an edit poly, go into edge mode, and control click on A to select all of the edges. All right, and now, depending on which version of 3ds Max you have, we're going to use chamfer. Um, if you know if you have 3ds max 2015 with the service pack or if you have 2016 that means you'll also have the uh, quad chamfer modifier that uh, you can use here but um, in this case I'm going to just use the regular chamfer from the uh, toolbar here all right so I'm going to shift click it to bring up the caddy and uh, the default settings are just fine here so I'm going with one centimeter for the amount and the segments I'll, I'll keep at one alright so I'll accept that okay now I'll switch over to um, to faces mode and I will select one of the interior faces alright and then we'll just go to uh, select similar alright right up here in the uh, graphite ribbon all right, so we have all of the interior faces selected here, all of the triangular triangular faces. All right, and we're just going to uh, go ahead and delete those and remove them from the scene. Okay. So now we just have this skeletal representation of our original model. All right, and this is uh, this is perfect for what we're going to do next. All right, so. Um, the next step is going to be uh, go ahead into face mode if you're if you've uh, deselected face mode go back into it and select one of the engons all right one of the circular looking uh, engons here on the object and again choose select similar to grab them all all right so now we're going to intrude uh, we're going to intrude these engons until they almost touch in the center of the object all right um, so I'm going to shift click on extrude and uh, I'm going to just give it a negative value all the way down until they are just about touching in the scene I'll zoom in here so you can see all right so we're we're intruding until they just about touch each other okay so right about even even like that is okay, but uh, I prefer to give it just a just a hairline of a space. All right, so we'll accept that. And now a little trick here, just to uh, we want to select uh, the ed the uh, vertices of all these uh, selected faces. So we're going to Control Click on Vertex. However, now we need to remove uh, those faces. 
while still re retaining the, uh, the vertex selection. And I've done this before in other tutorials, but uh, I'll explain it a little better here. So here we have the selection of our, in, our uh, uh, intruded, intruded faces. Now I'm holding down control on the keyboard and selecting the vertex level. All right, with those faces still selected. Now I'll go back to face selection and delete those faces. And now when I go back to vertex selection, and I'm not holding control this time, I'm just going back into vertex, those previous uh, vertices are now still selected. All right, so even though we've removed the faces. All right, now we need to remove the faces because the next step is going to be welding them, all these points together here, or at least uh, the closest points. So I just shift click it, clicked on uh, weld, brought up the caddy, and uh, in my case, 0.1 centimeters is enough. Uh, the before number of vertices will be 120, and after will be 96, and that's how you'll know you have that correct. All right, so all of these, uh, the closest points have been welded, so I'll accept that. All right, now with the vert with these vertices on the uh, inside still selected, go ahead and uh, let's see, is it uh, hold down control and go to border level? All right. And you'll see that these uh, triangular holes are now selected, and that's good because we'll just cap them to close that off. All right. So this is where we are so far. All right. Um, don't worry that you have triangles in the shape because we're going to uh, we're going to now add a turbo smooth modifier on top of the stack here and that's going to turn everything to quads. All right. And also give it this uh, this weird kind of uh, flower-like shape right now, all right, which is uh, kind of interesting actually, all right, but um, we only need one iteration here, so I'll just leave it at the default one iteration. Now on top of this, we're going to add a relax modifier, okay, so uh, we'll go with relax and 0 0.5 will be the value However, we'll increase the iterations to 20. And make sure your keep boundary points fixed is, in fact, selected. All right, and once you do that, you can see what, what has happened here. Okay, we went from this uh, almost flower-like shape, and then uh, the relax modifier brought it to, to this. And this is close, uh, very close to the, uh, to the shape in our render here. So. We're almost there, okay? Now, the next part uh, is going to be to add a shell modifier. I'm going to go with a thickness, uh, an inner thickness of about 0 0.7, okay? So this is about the thickness I'm looking for, all right? Um, we're going to also want to uh, make sure you, you'll notice that these uh, edges are selected and that's because in the shell modifier down here at the bottom you can tick the uh, select edges option and we'll need that for our next step. Okay, so select the uh, edges in the shell modifier, go to edit poly. Now go down to polygon mode and you'll see those edges that remain selected, so that's what we want. And now we'll try to uh, We'll see if this is going to be a problem here. There, there's some crossed edges here that I don't re recall having the first time and I did this, but uh, we'll see if that's problematic. I, again, I'm more concerned that you don't increase thickness enough that it crosses the edges up here because that wouldn't be uh, that would be uh, very problematic later on. All right, so uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'll try. Um, I'll try to relax that selection maybe. Let's see. Yeah, see that uh, that worked a little bit to clean that up. All right, so I gave it a relax of one iteration and I'm going to use the outline tool. I'm shift clicking on outline and I'm just going to increase the outline a little bit and 
using the relax and then the outline has cleared up that problem of overlapping edges there. Um, the relax made it a little too thin so then I can bring that back up with the outline tool. All right. So this looks like a pretty decent thickness right here. All right, and what I'll do at this point is uh, create an inset on those selected faces. All right, so we're just going to use the group inset and uh, just tap it down slightly until you have an inset that's roughly roughly about that deep. All right, now I, again I'm arbitrarily arbitrarily using these tools here, but uh, you know, you would be paying attention to your uh, scale here if you were doing this for 3D print. Okay. Um, in this case, it was just an inset of 0 0.13 centimeters, but um, you know, you might be working in millimeters or whatnot. Okay. So this is good for now. Um, the next step is going to be to. Uh, Go ahead and look inside each one of these uh, extruded arms here on the object, inside of each one of these points that we've created. And uh, you'll see that you have some patterns on the inside. Your, your polygons are making up some, some patterns here. And uh, they're all quads. However, if you select these three quads right in the center of uh, of, of the model here, okay, right in the center of this opening. All right, you'll see that uh, if you rotate to the other side of the of the uh, point, you have a similar pattern over here. Okay, select those three quads in that same kind of triangular pattern. Okay, and then what we'll do here is go ahead and bridge them. All right, I'm going to undo that bridge because I'm going to shift click the bridge tool and uh, I'm going to add one segment and just taper that slightly. Okay, maybe, maybe like that. All right, so I'm trying to get the uh, my mouse is a little. Uh, I think the battery's dying in it. It's not very uh, reliable right now, but we'll try to get through it here. Okay, so I've created one segment and I've just squeezed it together using the taper option, and I'll accept that. Okay, so let's do this now for all eight corners. Okay, so we'll just look inside the next one. And immediately you'll begin to see these patterns almost instantaneously once you once you do it uh, the first time. Okay, so here's the pattern here on the interior, and then I rotate around to the interior of the uh, extruded part, and I see I have the same triangular pattern right there. All right, and uh, we'll just repeat the bridge command, and it should recall the the settings of your initial. Uh, bridge so you won't have to open the caddy next time you'll just uh, hit your hotkey to uh, initiate the bridge so it can go very quickly around here alright so we'll do the same thing on the next one alright and uh, you might have to really the first couple times you might have to just get in there real close to find that triangular pattern on the inside here. Um, some geometry might be getting in your way. Uh, I happen to to know exactly what I'm doing here. I, I've done this model a couple times, so I could just quickly uh, spot it, but you, you might have a little trouble and just have to angle around, rotate around until you can find it. Um, and that's it. But So I just bridge that together. Okay. And I'm just going to go along and quickly do all the other ones. Um, there's not much to say at this point. All right, so we have that finished. And um, you can start to see this is coming together now. We're almost there. Um, the next thing you'll notice here on the render um, that we have these X uh, interconnections in that central 
part of the object, which I thought was was pretty cool because so much could be done with that. Even uh, for jewelry, you could uh, you could implant some jewels in the center here or whatever, you know. So a lot could be done here. Jewels can be put on the the, the ends of each one of these. I mean, it could really be uh, something special for a jewelry object. But um, you'll see these X's here, and that's what we're going to do next. And that is exactly the same procedure we did for each one of these uh, each one of these points, uh, the bridge uh, procedure, except that we're going to use uh, we're going to use extrude here, but um, the procedure of, of capturing these triangular patterns on the inside of each the corner of the each corner of the inside of the object is what I'm intending to stay here. All right, so um, you're just going to capture all of these triangles. There will be eight of them, obviously. Okay, so there, there's another one, and there's another. Okay, and again, you'll be able to find these very quickly. Uh, once you spot that first one, they'll just start to all uh, pop out to you. You know, as you're going around the object, you'll see them everywhere. So, uh, so there they are in the corners. All of these triangles have been selected. All right, they're actually quads, but uh, in triangular pattern. And now what we'll do is we'll shift click extrude, and um, we'll do the same technique that we had done earlier except that uh, we're going to do it here. Now, you just might want to get in a little closer here because what you want to do is make sure that uh, the ends, the end vertices of each one of these uh, sections is, 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 is very close to touching, if not touching. All right, and that's where you will stop. Okay, so you have this. All right. So you have all the corners, all the uh, the edges are touching each other on there. All right. So now, <clears throat> now from here we're going to control click vertices, then back to faces, delete the faces, go back to vertices, shift click on weld, and because we only have these vertices selected, they will be the only ones that will weld that will attempt to weld together here by this process. All right, so you might want to go until you see distortion, then back off slightly. All right, so to ensure that you have everything uh, welded up that you intend to weld up, you can push it until you see this little bit of distortion happening, then back off step by step until it's gone. And then you'll know uh, just by seeing the before and after, uh, we have 1,208 before, and there's 1,196 if it's done properly. All right, so we'll accept that. Now all these corner uh, verts should be welded together. So what we'll do is control click on the uh, border mode again. Actually, we don't want to do that. Well, then let me see. That might not work here, but we'll try it. Cap that off. Yeah, that's what I did. So we uh, control clicked on the uh, from our vertex selection, our vertex selection to our border selection. Just hold Control and and uh, and uh, it will select the borders, and then you can just cap them. All right. So now what we'll do is uh, we'll add some connections in here just to uh, get rid of these end gons. So, um, let's go ahead and deselect everything, and we'll start here, right in the middle, and we'll select a uh, this vertex, and then we'll select the uh, vertex right across from it, and this is like an X pattern here, so this vertex, and then the one down here, and we'll connect them, all right, just using, that's just your connect tool. All right, standard stuff. And then the next one, we'll select this vertex and then this vertex. And then we'll distance connect them. Okay, this is up here in the uh, graphite uh, ribbon. Yeah, right under connect is distance connect. So that's what I use there. Now I have both of those hot keyed, so you'll see me uh, going through it quickly, but those are the tools you'll use here. All right, so connect and then we'll uh, select these two and distance connect alright and what distance connect does is just puts a uh, 
puts a vertice, a, uh, a vertex right here on the uh, on the edge that it's crossed over. Okay, so um, connect these two, and then distance connect these two. All right, so you're making an X within the X here. All right, so to speak. All right, and this is just uh, just for to you know. We're doing this just to uh, maintain a, a, a cleaner geometry, basically. Uh, you, know, you know, to keep our quad, keep it quadded up in here. All right, so let's go to the top now, and this point and this point connect, and then disc distance connect. All right, and then we'll just go to the uh, go to the bottom hole here and do the same. And uh, we're almost we're almost done here. All right, so that's they're all quads now. So when we apply our turbo smooth, our final polish on the object, so to speak, uh, it, it will uh, it will look a lot better. Okay. Now before we do that, um, go ahead and select this uh, pattern in here. All right, the central pattern, and uh, select, well, actually select similar might not work in this case, um, because these are very evenly uh, spaced quads. These are uh, almost perfect squares. So select similar is going to uh, be ineffective here unless, uh, you know, it's just, they're too similar two other uh, squares on here so we'll just have to manually select them all right so we have all of these central parts selected and uh, what we're going to do here is just scale them down actually let me see that probably wasn't the best way to do this uh, let me switch this here yeah what we got to do here to scale this properly is to uh, go up to our uh, coordinate system here, our reference coordinate system, and right next to it is our uh, selection options, our pivot uh, selection options. And uh, by default, it's it's just using the pivot point center, and we want it to use uh, the selection center. So switch that to selection center and just uh, scale them down uniformly. All right, and you can go as, as, as small as you want here. It's, it's all just aesthetics at this point. All right, and uh, from here, we could go ahead and just try our turbo smooth. And I think what we're gonna find um, is that we're gonna need a segment in here. All right, so what we can do is just uh, select one of these edges and ring it. All right, let me see if select similar will work there. Yeah, so I uh, all I did here was select one of these edges here on, on one of these X, the arms of the X, and uh, I just ringed that selection, okay? And then uh, from there, just select similar to get, grab them all. All right, and then I will uh, shift click connect. And you know what? We just need one segment there, so that should be that should be fine. Okay. So just to put an extra segment in there, I think is going to be better for uh, topology purposes. Okay, so this is the object, and uh, to finish it off, we'll just add a turbo smooth, and we'll give the turbo smooth two iterations, so it's nice and clean. All right, and uh, there's the finished object. Okay. Um, now, if you, again, if you're going to 3D print this, if you're going to export this as an STL or whatever, it is a manifold object, so it it's, uh, should be watertight, um, and it should pass the STL checks. But um, <clears throat> just for uh, uh, 3D printing, I would increase that to three iterations to get a, as smooth a result as possible. Okay, and this is uh, where I would export to uh, STL. Thank <laughs> you.
All right, so there's our object with Isoline, and uh, that's it. We could, there's a lot you can do with this. Um, again, to customize it, to uh, make it your own, it's um, it, it's a beautiful object as it is. But um, you can see that there's so much more. You could add uh, diamonds in the middle uh, on the tips here, like I said, to make it into some kind of pendant, or uh, you know, we'll go ahead and rotate it. Um, and when you rotate it, believe it or not, you get this entirely different look to the object. Um, and then you can, you know, hang it uh, from some kind of uh, as some kind of charm or something. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Again, just use your imagination and have fun with it. Um, I hope you learned some techniques here. I hope something was useful. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like these videos. Uh, I'll have many more coming. In fact, I have another one in the works. Uh, I'll probably convert this one to Blender yeah, for uh, all my friends using Blender. And, um, you know, the process is uh, almost the same, but there are some differences. Um, especially when we're starting off, Blender doesn't have that, uh, that uh, uh, Hedra primitive. So... Um, just a few extra steps in the beginning and you're on your way. But uh, I will do a tutorial for this in Blender eventually and um, I have several more new objects that I'll be showing you how to create uh, in future tutorials coming up soon. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and like the video and I'll see you again very soon.